The Friend for Legion is our family. I thought you were going to say 53 then, and then I'll be like, yes. You join the Friend for Legion. The Legion say yes, and we will give you a second chance. Ten percent of our officers are coming from their own ranks, for they are foreigners. They give you free beer, basically. Thomas, how are you, brother? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chris. I'm fine. And you? Hey, I should say, comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? Je vais bien. Très bien. <laughs> <laughs> bien, bien. Yes, my French is um, un petit because... Un petit, tu parles français un petit peu. Oui. <laughs> we, we, we learned it at school. Okay. But, but you, you know yourself, you have to live in a country to really remember and get, get fluent. And, yeah. And in Elysian, you, you have to, everyone has to learn English. Is that, is, is it? No, everyone has to learn French. Everyone has to learn French. Yes, yeah. that's it. But I guess also a lot of guys are speaking English and then, then they're obvious, obviously their native uh, languages. They try to, but if you speak Eng another language in the French for Legion, then French, you will make a lot of push-ups. That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, easy to make push-ups in, in the military, hey? <laughs> it's easy. You learned that. It's the first thing you learn in French for Legion, how to make push-ups. Um, and what is, Thomas, what is your nationality? So I actually, I'm German. So, but it's a little bit uh, mixed because I was born in Germany. So I am a native German. My mother was a Fräulein, German Fräulein, and my father was an American, a GI, you know? So my mother was white, like a German lady should be. My father was black, and I'm the result of this uh, liaison. <laughs> yes. Um, and how old were you when you joined the, the Legion? I've been 23 years old. So it was in 1985, and if I could do it one more time, let's guess I would have joined when I have been 18, so five years earlier. Yeah. And why is that? Yeah, because uh, 23 was a little bit. I don't know. I, I think that the Legion was for me a for me a very good experience, a a life guide, a red line in my life. And I wished I could have had this red line a little bit before, you know? Um, yeah, there was something missing, you know? There was a gap. Yeah, I, I was 18 when I joined the Marines. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's, it's all changed. It's a lot, a lot of really older people joining. Yeah. Now you can join when you're, I think, so somebody put in the comments, but I think it's 32, which yeah. is, is really old, right? I mean, you, I think at 32, I, uh, I... You, you're talking about the Royal Marines, right? Yes, yes. Listen, in the French for Legion, you can join until the age of 39 and a half years. <laughs> I, thought yeah, you were yeah. gonna, I thought you were going to say 53 then, and then I'll be uh, like, yes. Uh, where no, do I sign? Where do I sign up? No, it's it's thirty nine and a half actually, right? And for for us English people, we have a very romantic view of the Legion because we we grew up, or my age did, with um, do you know the novel Beau Bogest? Yeah, yeah. You know, this uh, young man, he's from a very privileged background 
he he commits a crime or or maybe he didn't commit it, but he has to escape. So he he joins the French Foreign Legion and goes to North Africa and yeah, that that was our, our uh, that that's the sort of stuff I grew up with. But I guess the re I mean, is the reality that lots of people join to escape a criminal conviction? Yeah, absolutely. Not always. You know, let's say that uh, coming first to the romantical view of uh, the French Foreign Legion, as you know better than I do, you know, uh, Sir Simon Murray, who has been in the Legion five years, a British gentleman. He joined, he, he also came from a, a privileged family. He was, his parents had been rich and he joined the Legion to come out of this, uh, I would say, it hamster wheel and go into the reality. And he was looking for a romantic part of his life and he get that. He stayed five years and then he, he joined uh, the civil life. And I guess he took a lot of uh, romantic views from the friend for Legion to his, who will stay in, in, in his memory, right? Yeah. And uh, in my time, it was also uh, that uh, I have taken a lot, a lot of uh, good memories, good souvenirs, the romantic way of life in a, in, a, in a soldier's life, you know. I've been two years in the French Foreign Legion in the third REI, and this is uh, the Jungle Regiment in French Guyana. So we are based in Kuru, and uh, you know, I have, I have, uh, I could have joined the second rep paratroopers. I could have joined the 13th DBLE or another regiment in the French Foreign Legion. Uh, even go for medals, go for intervention, or go for 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 money. But I didn't. I chose the adventure. And this was in the French for Legion's third REI, you know, deep jungle, crocodiles, macheta running through the bush with a big rucksack on, on, on my back. This was my this was this was my my romantic in the French for Legion. This was perfect. What's, yeah. what, what indeed was the question? Uh, your question, repeat, please. Oh, um, it's just we have this idea. No, well. We don't now, but we used to in the old days that we thought so many criminals just escape, escape to France and join the Legion. Yeah, that's um, still true. Uh, I think that the French for Legion is still today, it always, always was, but it's still today one of the only institutions worldwide who give you guys, whoever it is, a second chance. And this is very important to understand, you know. Let's come to Germany. When you have a criminal record, you know, your chance is over, done, fini, finish. You cannot have a good job and you have, you are kind of uh, badass that in, in the way that uh, nobody takes a piece of, of, of bread from you because you have a criminal record. And, and, and it's always like a stigma in your life. It's like a, it's, it's like a let's say, Something is not good. It's not working out. You can do this job. You can take this job. This entrepreneur will not take you because of the criminal record. The Friend for Legion gives you guys a second chance. If you are on it, if you are a very uh, team player, and if you are able to forget what's behind, if you're able to see forward, to looking forward, they give you an, a second chance. And the Legion goes further than this. The Legion gives you a second identity. Because when you join the Legion today, you automatically will earn or have another name, a second name, a wrong name, right? And we call it anonymat. Or in French, we say it, sous identité déclarée. What means you come in the French for Legion, your name is Alphonse Court. The French for Legion will make out of you Anton Kakalu, whatever, you know, mm. that's it. And coming back to the criminal record, if you have done something in a country and the police is, is knocking on the door, the friend for Legion, and they ask for Anton Kurz, the friend for Legion say, no, we don't know this guy. Ah. And, this is true. and this is true. They don't know this guy because your name now is another name. You know, they protect you. And this protection is very, very important. This is uh, one of the most important things the, the French for Legion can, can give you, the protection, you know? And uh, the protection is 
you know. But yes. we have to we have to know that when I say criminal record, it does not mean that the French for Legion takes everybody. When you have blood on your fingers, when you are a, a high drug drug guy, you know, dealing with heavy drugs, when you are a murderer, when you have blood on your fingers, they will not take you. Yeah, yeah I, I get it. I get it. Get it. That's it. Um, does that mean then? See, I've said this. I've said this several times on, on my podcast. In the Marines, back in my day, it's ch it's changing now because things are. The environment is soft, softer. Yeah. But back in my day, you got some really violent people, mm -hmm. and you didn't want to, you know, light light their touch paper, <laughs> but especially when they were, you know, six foot. Sorry, your metric, but you know, I don't know what what it is in metric, but but they're this giant guy, and you just had to go, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you had to fight and. You get smashed up. Um, is that the same then? In was that your experience? Did you get some guys that, like, if I mess with him, he might kill me when when I'm asleep? Yes, of course. I had this experience uh, even very often, even very often. But uh, you know, uh, when I joined the Legion, I was in the in the boot camp in Kastanodari, and there he, had, I I met a lot of uh, kind of bandits and gangsters and outlaws, you know, and uh, let me tell you an example. I had uh, once I had to deal with a, with a Turkish guy. <laughs> His name was Erdogan. No, not like the president was he real Erdogan. And once he wanted to take my boots huh? and I wanted my boots back. But the guy, Erdogan, he had three or cut friends with him. And all of them has been about, uh, what, 20 kilos more than me. Books are bad guys, really bad asses, you know. Uh, but in these uh, in these situations, you have to find your place. You have to impose yourself. If you step back, you're lost forever. And that and 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 you have to take the fight, you know. In this time, in this example with my boots, I didn't fight, but my friend did because he was standing behind me. Was a British gentleman. His name was also Chris. He was an ancient fighter from the Falkland. He was in Falkland. And uh, he, he made the things for me. He did my job. But he didn't give me a chance because he was too quick. <laughs> so he, take, he, took, he, he punched the guys, took my boots back, bring my boot, brought my boot back to me. Here, Thomas. And he told me, Thomas, never accept that, what, that one guy talks to you in this way. And the next time this happens, you will do your fight yourself. And this was, was an advice. And after this experience, I always remembered his words. And then it was like this. And the next time I came in a similar situation, it was my fight. I accepted the fight. And that's it. You know, that's French for Legion also. You have winners, you have losers. But you don't have to be a, a guy who steps back, who turns around, who flees. No. If you do, you're done. Your image is done and ah, it's not good. Yes, I've got you. Because, because once you might be an NCO, you know, a superior, an NCO, even maybe an officer. And if the story goes around that you are somebody who flees all the time because he's afraid, no. No chance. Yes. Yeah. Thomas, you mentioned in South America, what was the name of where your base was? Kai, Kai Kikora? Kai um, the French for Legion, they have one regiment. It's the 3rd REI, 3rd Regiment Etranger d'Infanterie. They are based in South America, in French Guiana. Yeah. This is between uh, Suriname yeah. and Brazil. And the place, the city is called Kuru. Kuru, and camp, yes. And the camp I've, is... I've yeah. been there. I've been there. Okay, right. Yeah, it's the, the space... Is it the European Space Station is there? Yes, the ASA is the European Space Agency. And this was, was also one of our main projects to protect the Ariane rocket, you know? Yes. Yeah. I, I loved South America. I've, I've, traveled, I've traveled every country in the Americas, North, Central, and South. Well, at, nice. least, at least on the mainland. And I camped 
I camped out in the jungle in French Guiana. Mm -hmm. And I also went to Devil's Island, you know, the, I, the penal oh, yeah, colony. Yeah. Great. I've been there a lot of times here. It's incredible, isn't it? The history. Genuine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I guess you know the story of Papillon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Papillon with uh, Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman. Yes. Yeah, I, I guess this is, it's a true story. And I think one of some scenes has been turned uh, on the Devil's Island there. Yeah. And I have been there several times and I, I saw the old buildings, you know, very impressive. Yeah. I saw on the floor in one of the death cells, the solitary confinement, Papillon had he chiseled his name. He said Pap Papillon in, in the floor. It was incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Yes. And um, what is the training like? Where, where did you train? And I'm guessing it was pretty tough. You, we are talking still about uh, South America, don't we? Uh, no, about the, the Legion itself. Where do you go to train? Where do you do your oh, training? This depends on in which regiment you are serving. You know, in the, in the third REI in South America, We trained and we had a jungle warfare school there called CEFE, Centre Entrainement Forêt Equatorial. And it was in a deep forest in a camp we called Matei, Camp Matei. Yeah? It's uh, on the Mataroni River. And this was our basis camp. And there we trained to deal with all kinds of dangers, you know, yeah? uh, survival Uh, jungle warfare and all this stuff. This was our basis training, basis training camp. And then uh, the next, I spent two years there. And then I was ordered to join the second rep. It's Deuxième Regiment Etranger de Parachutistes. These are the, it's the only paratrooper regiment the French Foreign Legion has. And there we have the basis camp in Con Rafali in Corsica. But from there, we started all over the world to train. You know, uh, my company was... Uh, was the domain of my company, I was in the first company, was um, urban warfare, so war in built up areas. So we trained a lot in Germany, in Hammelburg, because in Hammelburg, there's one city called Bonland, and this is the idle place to train in, in, in uh, urban warfare. Yeah. Yep. And then of course we, go to, we went to France to all the, to the big uh, shooting ranges, La Cotine and, uh, And uh, I, uh, sweep and all, and, and all the big places where you can shoot all kinds of calibers, where you can make maneuver with the group, with the platoon, with, even with the company, and use all the weapons you have, you know, in a company. Yeah. And what, um, what weapons do you train with? All kinds of weapons, you know. When, you, when we take the case that you are in a normal fighting company, yeah, you train, uh, let, let's say, We had the pistol Mac, uh, PA Mac 50, then we have a shotgun uh, 12 gauge, then we had, of course, the FAMAS. FAMAS were just coming out when I joined the Legion, mm -hmm. uh, before it was the MAS Francis FAMAS. Then we had uh, the machine gun AA52, uh, sniper rifle FRF1, then FRF2, the difference is the bigger caliber, you know. And also, uh, when we come to the sniper rifle, we had the Macmillan, yeah. And the Hecat 2, these two arms or two weapons are sniper rifles. You can shoot in a range up to 1,500 meters. And the caliber is the caliber 50. And we also had the Browning machine gun, caliber 50. We call them Doucet 12.7. Yeah. And of course, in the fighting company, we had mortars 81, mortars 81. And the last, uh, the last equipment we had, we have earned was the Eryx. Eric's is a very powerful anti-tank weapon, shooting in a range from, uh, let's say, 50 to 600 meters. And this is incredible. The Eric's uh, warhead destroy every tank, you, every tank in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this warhead destroys bunkers and, and, and buildings and tanks, of course, yeah. Thomas, can, can you talk us through, uh, From the moment you, you go to the recruiting office, what, what happens then and how, how does the training unfold? Yeah, of course, I can take my case and it's still the same today. 
Uh, in French, we have uh, about 11 uh, PILs. PIL is Post Information Relation Étrangère, Recruiting uh, an Information Desk Office. There you can recruit uh, when you want to join the French Foreign Legion. So we stayed, I stayed uh, one week in Strasbourg, just the place I joined the French Foreign Legion. Then after one week, you are transported to Aubagne. And Aubagne is the first RE, is the mother house of the French Foreign Legion. And uh, in this mother house, you have the company who is responsible for the, the new legionnaires. You stay there for, let's say, three weeks, and you have to make all the tests, you know, physical tests, uh, sport tests, medical tests, and also background check from the Gestapo. Gestapo is the, let's say, uh, uh, how can I say, military intelligence, military intelligence. And when you're through, when your sportive and medical and background from the intelligence is good, you will be sent to Castelnaudary. And there you make your boot camp. And it's for three months, at least for 17 weeks. And it's very genuine. Uh, it's a very genuine era or, or epoch in your life in the, of the French Foreign Legion. Because as you know better than I do, we have about 140 nations, all kinds of religions, all beliefs, all colors, you know. And it's very tough. It's very tough because we had to deal with a guy, with guys who have never been in the army, who don't know that a weapon can shoot, and we have to deal uh, with a gentleman who has been already in, in 10 years or 15 years in their army. So we have to make a, we have to make a kind of group analysis. And then you do your boot camp. When the boot camp is almost finished, in the big, oh, let's say after the first three weeks, you earn your Capi Blanc, you make the Marche Capi Blanc, it's about 90 up to 90, 110 kilometers with a rucksack on your back, you have to do it in three days. Then they will is issue to you the Capi Blanc. I have mine here. <laughs> they issue to you the Capi Blanc, and then you are accepted in the family legionnaire, the legion's family. Then when the instruction is almost finished, you have a red funding compound, what means everything you learned in, this, in the boot camp, you have to do and to show and to prove. It's like a school. It's like an exam. And then uh, you, ha you have notes, you know, that you will be judged after your, uh, your, what, what you show them, what you are able to do. And you have a ranking, of course, a ranking, a ranking going from one to the last. And I was the first of my class, so I could choose my regiment. It's always like this. When you're first, second or third of your class, you can choose the regiment you want to go. And the rest has to go there where the French for Legion needs men. You know? So mm -hmm. when you finish, when you're through with the boot camp, you will be sent to your regiment. In my time, they have been in, uh, in Tahiti, in Mayotte, in French Guiana, in Chibouri, and the rest of the regiment in, uh, in, in the metropole in, in, in France, you know? And also, the fact is, is that you, at this point of your uh, career in the French Foreign Legion, you already speak French very well, and you understand almost everything. Uh, so you, you are able to join the regiment without problems. Uh, and then your, your career in the in French Foreign Legion starts, takes your, your beginning, you know. Did you speak French? Uh, not in the beginning. When I joined the Legion, I could say, uh, bonjour, that's all. That's all. <laughs> but you learn very quick. Yeah. How, how quick? Uh, let's say, depends on, the, on the, the, the situations. I think three months, three months. Okay. I, will, I, will, I will give you an example. You have to learn French. You ha it's, it's important. I rem remember always one scene. I have been in maybe in the second week in the, in the boot camp. And we have been, uh, we were living in a, in, a, in a big room, 45 legionnaires together in one big room. So, and I was to, I, I just woke up and the door opened and an Irish caporal stormed in the, in, in the room. And he was uh, in front of me and he was screaming, Cyril le Rangers, Cyril le Rangers. I didn't understand what he wanted. Not a word. And then he makes me pump it, push ups. So I made 50, 60, 70 push-ups until my nose is in dirt. After this, I had muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and then my binom came, a French guy, and he told me, hey, Thomas, he only wanted you to make shine your boots. 
And then I understood. And then every time the caporal came, hey, Thomas, I knew that I have to shine my boots. And in, it's in this way you learn French. So every day you learn by experience because you have to speak French. You have, you have to understand. And then every day you have courses in French language. And it's the plateau leader who gives you the courses. And every day you learn three words. What brings you in the end of the boot camp to able you speak 450 up to 500 words. And that's enough. So it's very quick. It's very efficient, you know. Great. And you are you are forbidden to talk in your language. And this is very, a very important point. Do the instructors, do they ever say something, for example, in English, because it's really important everyone, un or, or do they only speak French, the instructors? They, they only speak French in the beginning. In the beginning, let's say the first three months in the boot camp, and maybe the first three or four months in the regiment, if you really don't understand what is really seldom, yeah, if you have English instructors or German instructors and you are German and I'm your instructor and, and you didn't understand, of course, I will help you out and I will explain you how things work, you know? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And did you ever meet Christian Jennings? Mm. I don't know. The name tells me nothing, but I have to see his face. When I see his face, I can tell you if I know him or not. He wrote a book called Mouth Full of Rocks. It's a really good book. I you heard know, about it. Ma Mouth yeah. Full of Rocks. <laughs> yeah. he, he said that was a punishment. They would make you go and fill your mouth with rocks. Is this true? I mean, I'm not saying he's lying. I, I mean, did you experience this? Uh, this is Maybe possible, but I never experienced this, no. Mm. Yes. It, um, I had a friend in the Marines, in, in the Royal Marines, mm. um, and he, uh, he got kicked out for, smoke, for smoking dope. I mean, uh, marijuana, right? You know, ha mm. hash. Mm -hmm. And when he went in front of the commanding officer... He said, sir, if you charge me for this, um, he said, sir, I suggest you just let me go, right, to, to civ civ civilian street. He said, but if you insist on charging me, I will write a book about the Royal Marines and I will tell the world what really happens <laughs> in the Royal Marines. And the commanding officer went, you're dismissed. <laughs> this is, this, for anyone listening, this is a true story. I'm not going to say the chap's name, but some people will know the guy I'm on about. I, um, I was in training. No, 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 no. Sorry. He said, sir, I served with the Foreign Legion and I smoked hash every single day. No problem. He said, I served with the Royal Marines and I smoked hash every single day no problem you know it was never a problem nobody knew he was a very very good soldier um mm -hmm. and then when he said this to the commanding officer the commanding officer said go <laughs> so yeah. i wonder is, um is is it normal to smoke hash in the in the legion or is it is it against the rules um it's not normal it's not normal of course uh you know, in the French for Legion, it's not, it not, it's not a Boy Scout school, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's for men. And, and of course, we were drinking alcohol a lot, maybe, maybe too much. But this is normal. Because even you have been in intervention, in intervention, norm, most of the time you cannot drink, you have no alcohol, you have no drugs. So it's intervention. When you're in the garrison, this is another world. So when you are in the world, in your garrison, you want to go to operation. When you are in operation, you want to be back in a certain point, in a certain way in the garrison. You know, if you're here, you want to be there. If you're there, you want to be here. When you are in the garrison, of course, uh, legionaries take, smoke hashes, smoke marijuana. Uh, they do it 
most of the time secretly, and most of the time it's okay. It's not a, it's, it's not a, a problem made out of this. And of course, when legionnaires are in the garrison, they drink. And this is also a normal process because when we are in operation, we cannot do. Huh? And when we are in the base, in our camps at home, not in operation, it's a little bit boring, you know, because our life is op going to operations. And yes, in the French for Legion, as in, other, in every other army of the world, we drink. That's okay. It's no problem. Uh, we, are, we are no Boy Scouts. We are soldiers. We are men. And some of the Legionnaires smoke hashes and marijuana. That's yeah. okay also. Uh, the, I think the, most, the biggest problem in this, uh, in this world, in this uh, team, is are the officers. You know, 10% uh, of our officers are coming from their own ranks. So they are foreigners. And they understand legionnaires. They know what we are thinking. They know what is going around in our head because they have been through where we have been. But the other 90% are French officers coming uh, directly from the French officer school, maybe from Saint-Cyr. And they don't know the legionnaires very well. So uh, this is a little bit, this is a, a little bit the legionnaires problem. The French officers, because they are not uh, they don't understand us very well. Yeah. Yes. Is it true, Thomas, that Cronenberg, you know, the, the beer company, mm -hmm. that they sponsor the Foreign Legion? I guess, yes. They give you free beer, basically. Yeah, I guess, yes, because the French Foreign Legion is maybe the biggest consumer of Cronenberg <laughs> in France. <laughs> I heard that they kind of send it out to Iraq and Afghanistan and, and this kind of stuff. Um, I don't know how true that is. But. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Uh, but there were, but the same, at the same time, I will mention before I forget it, that the French for Legion, they make their wine themselves. We have a, we have a place called Pulubier. It's in the southern French and it's our uh, senior institution for for legionnaires who have served in the legion and they go out, they have a place to stay, you know, until the end. And there we make our wine ourselves. And it's a very good wine. Wine of the French for legion, from the French for legion. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yes. We drink a lot of Cronen. Uh, when I was in the Marines, it was a favorite drink because 1664. Yeah. That is the birthday of the Royal Marines. Okay. Yeah. Little bit, of a, little bit of history there for everybody. Um, do you know, I um, was reading, have you heard of Ant Middleton? No. He, he does this, um, you probably, maybe not familiar, but there's a very popular show on television called SAS, Who mm -hmm. Dares Wins? And he is one of the um, the training staff on it. And he he was actually in the SBS, the Special Boat Service, which is yeah. the Marines Special Forces. Mm -hmm. But he said in his memoir, when he was attached to the French Foreign Legion, mm -hmm. he said he saw a kind of family that he'd never experienced before. Mm -hmm. He said at the end of the day, everyone would have a beer and they would come around, maybe the fire and, and sing, sing songs. Um, it sounds incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. We call ourselves, we are a big family. You know, one of our slogans, it's, it's a motto, it's Legio Patria Nostra, the, the friend for Legion is our family. You know, imagine you left your country, you're coming from India. You have a criminal record. You want a second chance. You join France. You join the French for Legion. The Legion say, yes, we will give you a second chance. So you have lost your old family and you're looking forward to have a new family. And then your new family is the Legion. We're coming from all around of the, of the world, you know, 140 nations, all religion, all beliefs, as I told you. And yes, of course, this makes us strong. And this is the biggest, uh, this is the biggest uh, force of the French for Legion is the solidarity, you know? Stay together as one, as a big brotherhood of arms. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yes. I'm just looking yeah, yeah. for, excuse me, Thomas, I'm on the internet. I'm just looking for some, name, some 
a name of somebody I want to ask you, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell us what about swimming? What about swimming tests in in your training? Do you have to be a good swimmer? I have always be a good swimmer, but when I joined the Legion in '85, we don't have had a swimming test. Now they have, but to do this is very easy. You only have to be able that you can swim 25 meters without floating it, and that's it. So this should not be a hindrance or a problem to join the Legion. Huh? Yes. And in my time, in my time, it was that if a Legionnaire couldn't swim in the boot camp, they teach them how to swim. So once a week, they took all the no swimmers, brought them to a swimming pool in, in the town, yeah, and they teach them how to swim. So when joining the, the regiments, everybody was able to swim, no problem. Mm. Easy going. Yes, there was um, a TV program. Have you ever heard of Bear Grylls? No. No, so, I mean, you, you wouldn't have, but he's quite a quite a famous um, TV celebrity here, and he's, he's mm -hmm. been in the SAS. He's now the honorary colonel, an honorary colonel in the Royal Marines, and it's, um, he did a program called Escape to the Legion, and he okay. took, he took yeah, like yeah. 10, 10 guys, 15 guys, just, I think they were just uh, normal, you know, regular English guys. And he just took them, or British guys, I should say, took them to the, they took them to the desert somewhere. And um, um, the reason I'm asking, I, I wanted to find the name. Uh, th th there was a chap, the, the commander or the trainer, um, uh, I can't remember his name. He was going to come on my podcast, but he's never, um, yeah, he's never, uh, we've never managed to, 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 to get it together. I, I wanted to ask you if you knew this guy, because he's apparently really famous. Um, just bear with me. Yeah, yeah, but no problem. Take your time. By the way, I can tell you that I worked with Royal Marines also together. Not in the army, but uh, later then when I have been in the private security. So I spent four years in Saudi Arabia to protect the European uh, embassy there. And we have, a be have been uh, two teams of 14 men and about uh, four or five guys worked with me there has been in the Royal Marines. And I can tell you that you guys are really tough. Your, your guys are, root, uh, are good and I trust you 100%. Really good, good job done by them. Yep. Yes. Yes, thank you. Was was did you say Saudi Arabia? Yes, in Saudi Arabia. How was that good fun? Yeah, absolutely. We have been there for four four years, and our job was protect the European Commission to Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. Yeah. And um, did they? I bet they paid you very well. Oh, uh, yeah. Not not like they paid. Uh, private security in Afghanistan and Iraq. But it was a, a, how can I say it, a stable job. We worked four years, we had a contract, who was renewed year by year, and we worked there for a British company, security company. Uh, it was good. And once also we had the opportunity to protect uh, Bill Gates when he was there to, to buy the Four Seasons Hotel. <laughs> so he was there for three days and we, uh, we protected Bill Gates there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. I'm not going to say anything about that, but some of my uh, <laughs> some of my viewers will wish you didn't didn't protect him. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, no. Stop. Stop talking about this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Stop. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and what about combat? Did you experience much actual fighting? Um, I I can say that I spent I spent 17 years in a legion and. Maybe we did less combat that you will think by yourself. We had combats, of course, but not like, of course, like uh, our our um, more and major, our older legionnaires we know have have experienced in uh, you know in the big war like Indochine, Vietnam, like Algeria war, like Chad war, and, and all this stuff. We had, you know, with with with. 
with the time who comes and pass away, we have other, we have other uh, war field, you know, other theater of operations. And I can say that maybe my, my biggest experience in combat has been, of course, uh, in, Bos in the Bosnia war, where we uh -huh. stayed uh, 92 to 93, uh, like the United Nations Protection Force. We spent six, we spent six months there. Afterwards, we have uh, small intervention in, uh, in the Central African Republic against poachers. And then we have been deployed in, uh, in Chiburi. We have been deployed in, in Congo, in Zaire, in Brazzaville, you know. Yeah. And yeah, it was good. It was tough, yes. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it was very tough. So originally, I'm, I'm speaking for our friends at home now. Um, I'm guessing that the lesion was for, for the French colonies, wasn't it, in Africa, to to support them, to protect them, to, mm -hmm. um, you know, have a rule of law or, 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 or whatever. Did, did the Legion get much smaller when the colonies went, went back, back to the Africans? Yes, of course. Actually, we have about uh, 8,500 Legionnaires, active Legionnaires. And uh, I, I guess that in the Algeria war, it was... Uh, maybe five times more, you know? And then uh, when the Algeria war was finished then uh, the French Foreign Legion gets smaller and smaller ev every year until the effective of uh, this range of 8,500 men. Yeah. And I, of course, when I, when, when I came to uh, interventions, I forget, I only spoke for my case, for my company. Of course, the French Foreign Legion, my time has been deployed in also in Somalia, has been, they have been deployed in Cambodia, they have been deployed in Rwanda, after the genocide, and uh, after my time, they have been deployed also in Ivory Coast, in Ivory Coast, and of course in Afghanistan a lot. So my regiment has been uh, four times in Afghanistan. Eh? Yeah, was that yeah. was that um, was that after your time? Yeah, after my time was in two thousand eight, nine, and ten. Yeah, and did you? Sorry, Thomas, did you say you're in Bosnia? I have been in Bosnia in 92, 93, yes. Was that at the height of the trouble there? Yes, of course. The, we have been deployed at the airport in Sarajevo, and the city was uh, surrounded by the uh, Serbian fighters, by the Chetniks, and it was war. It was war, yeah. Yeah. Did you see any signs of these, these, these genocides? Um, yeah, what is we have to make make clear what is the what is the termination of genocide? Yeah, uh, not like it happened afterwards in Srebrenica, you know, uh, where the Serbians killed about uh, I, I guess seven thousand uh, Bosnians. But uh, we have seen, of course, deaths every day, every day. So our main mission was uh, the the crossing, uh, the, the crossing mission. So. Uh, imagine that Sarajevo has been surrounded by the Chetniks and the only uh, possibility for the Bosnian people to survive has been the airport. Uh, so in the nighttime, they tried to come from Budmir, crossing the airport, going into Sarajevo to bring ammunition, to bring food, to bring water, to bring things to survive and weapons. It was the only possibility to survive. Uh, and uh, our job has been to keep the Bosnians away crossing the airport from Budmir, going into Srebrenica to, to support their brothers you know, who were fighting there. And this was really dangerous. And uh, every night we had about, we had about uh, seven, eight, nine deaths. Not, not the Legion, but the Bosnian we, we picked up. And they had about uh, 35 up to 45 uh, wounded people every day. And people who had have been dead every day. Once I remember a scene, I was sitting in my, in my armor carrier, in my armored carrier, and I had a, I had a, a boy on my knee, right knee, a, a, a girl on my left knee, both about seven years old. Her mother was sitting opposite to me, one meter away from me, and she had three bullets in her chest, and I knew the mother will die in two or three hours. She will be dead. And it was, it was what, what, what could I say to the boy and to, the, to, to their child? Everything is good. It's just war. It's just bullshit, you know? And, and yeah, this is, 
this is also kind of genocide because it happened every day. You know? Yeah. Did you suffer afterwards? Did you suffer with trauma? I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, for me, myself and I, maybe a little bit. Mm. In the beginning, it was very strong for me. It was very uh, uh, curious to be back in a civil life. And I remember the first scene where I doubted a little bit if I have BTBS or not, a trauma. And it was a situation I was in. I've been in a supermarket. It was in 2002. So uh, I left uh, in 2002. And later I was once in a supermarket. And my wife told me uh, to buy detergent, you know, to buy dog food and all this stuff. And I was standing in the supermarket. And finally it was, there, were, there have been detergent, red ones, blue ones, green ones, dog food, this kind of dog food, this kind of dog food. And I get crazy and I thought by myself, fucking hell, what I'm doing here? And I wished in this moment to be far away from people, far away from the civil persons. I wished in this moment to be back in my unit, have a rucksack or a parachute on my back, but not here buying nonsense things, you know, being in a strange world I could not understand and the people did not understand Thomas Gas. So for me, it was kind of a trauma in the beginning. And once it was the second big thing, I thought, I saw a movie, was with, uh, I guess, with Mel Gibson. I, I don't remember the I don't remember the, the the name of the movie, but it was in soldier US soldiers fighting in Vietnam. It was nothing. I looked the movie, I went to sleep. And afterwards, in the nighttime, in the morning time, my wife told me that I was screaming in nighttime. And then then I was uh, boxing my pillow, <laughs> you know, and I was sweating and I was, you know, I was not me, myself, and I. But I didn't, I didn't uh, realize that myself, my wife told me. But later then, with the time, steps back, steps back, steps back. I think for me, in this moment where I'm sitting and talking to you, everything is okay. But we never know. No. Yeah. That film was We Were Soldiers Once and Young. Exactly. And uh, there, was, there was a unit surrounded by uh, flying in with, uh, with bell, with bell helicopters. Yeah. And they have been uh, in a big ambush, a big fighting. And yeah, I know. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fantastic book for anybody who, who likes to read military history. Um, Colonel Hal Moore, he's, he's dead, dead now. Yeah. Um, uh, he had a chap. One of his men was Rick Riscola, who died in the World Trade Center trying to get the people out. Yeah. Um, but that book is just, it's, it, it, it's just incredible. You know, every evening, because they're surrounded by jungle and the, the Viet Cong are just creeping towards them all the time. Every mm -hmm. evening for two minutes, he ordered his men just to, to let rip into the jungle with e everything that they had just in the trees. <laughs> and I understand. The, you know, the next morning when they sent out patrols, there's all these dead bodies just, you know, in the trees everywhere. It's just, you know, obviously an awful situation, but a really powerful book, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And... Thomas, you you look very fit, very strong. You know, actually, I am sixty, Whoa. and I I'm uh, I'm a big outdoor fan. I make I make survival. I make outdoor. I I really like to move. I just coming back from Norway, where I have a meeting with friends, and we made out of a, a good YouTube clip out of this, and we have been with a rucksack on our back climbing the mountains. Yes, I make sport every day as much as I can. And as, as much my, my, my body still supports. And, you know, once legionnaire, always legionnaire. Yes. You know, yeah. Mar march or die. March or die. March or crave. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, what message, um, before we finish, what, what message shall we give to young people that might be listening, who might be struggling in their life? Um, maybe maybe mental health, maybe depression, maybe they're unhappy in their job. What, what, what can we say for them, Thomas? 
I would say that uh, to, to all the young men who are listening right now, always tell the truth. Never lie. This is a very important point. When you stand up early in the morning, you go down to the bathroom, look in the mirror, and what you are see is just brilliant. Believe in yourself. What you see in the mirror is just good. It may be the best you can find on earth. You are unique. You are unique. And the next tip is that you only have one life, and it's your life. It's not the life of your wife, not the wife of your, not the life of your children, not the life of your parents or neighbors or friends. It's your life. And in your life, you have always to follow your intuition, your, your, your stomach, you know? Don't follow your brain. Don't follow the tips or advices when parents say, oh, in your life, you should do this. You, you should visit this school. You should learn this. This is the good profession for you. No. It's your life. You make your decision. And when your stomach says, your, 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 uh, I said, uh, intuition, when it says to you or your heart, I want to do this because this is my life. This is my way. Go for it. Go for it. Listen to advices, but it's your decision to make your own life. You only have one life. It don't last forever. And on your grave should not be written, I lived the life of another person. I lived the life of my parents. On your grave should be written, I did it myself. I lived my life. And this is very important. You only have one. And you won't have maybe a second chance. Yes, we have a second chance in the French Foreign Legion. That's it. Yes, for our young people listening, don't be doing too much of this stuff because that... No, 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 no. You'll look no, no. back at, at Thomas's <laughs> age and my age. Thomas is, is it, was it 60, Thomas? Yeah, 60. 60. I'm 21. And that's a joke. That's, um, yep. you don't want to get to your old age and just be playing video games. Um, yep. Thomas, one last thing. I've seen you singing, singing on your, <laughs> on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, in fact, let's let let me ask you how how ha you you have a very successful YouTube channel. You you have thousands of um, I call them friends, but subscribers. Mm -hmm. And um, how has your YouTube journey been? You are talking about my YouTube history. Yeah, has it been a good experience? As a YouTuber, yes. You know, actually, I have three channels. I have one German. is my main channel. I have about uh, 90,000 uh, followers. Wow. I have uh, a channel in, uh, in German also. It's called the Männerschmiede. Männerschmiede, what means uh, it's a channel about and for men. You know, all the problems, all, all the, you know, everything around men. You know, our problems, what we can live, how we should live, our values, our virtues, you know, and all this stuff, how we're staying together, uh, giving tips and receiving tips and all this stuff. I talk about the man's world and there I have about 10,000 or 11,000 followers, but I also have an English channel and the English channel, channel is called The Legionnaire. And I think I have about uh, 25,000 followers. Mm. And there in the English channel, I mostly I talk about my military life, my past in the French Foreign Legion. And it maybe could be very interesting for one or the other guy listening right now. The Legionnaire, Thomas Gast, the Legionnaire. Yes. Yeah. That reminds me, I must say thank you to a gentleman called Finn. Uh, hello, mm. Finn. Finn put Thomas and I in contact. Finn's been helping me with my, my channel. Uh, very nice very nice man. Um, so, Finn, massive thank you to you. And Finn, thanks for doing a good job, Finn. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And, Thomas, ca can you give us a, a Legionnaire song? What kind of song do you want? Is, is there a really popular one? Uh, La Légion Marche vers le front. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. La Légion... What was the next word? La Ligue. Uh, uh, Jean-Marche, uh, le front. 
en chantant nous suivant. Riche de cette tradition, nous sommes avec elle. This is the song of the second rap, you know? Yes. And it's a, it's a form of chant from, uh, come from Germany. It's the, it's the form of song from the Waffen SS. Yeah? Yes, because the connection there is that a lot of SS officers went, uh, or men went, Yeah. To join the Legion to fight in Vietnam. Yeah, I think, I guess that about every second chant or, or song we have in the French for Legion has a, a German background, you know, has a German background. And, or, and we took the, the chant coming out, coming right from the Waffen SS or from the Wehrmacht. We keep it with the melody, but we put another text and we, mm. we, and we break with the spirit because we don't like Nazi spirit. It's not good. It's not healthy. We have yeah. our spirit, and it's the spirit of the French for Legion, Esprit Legion, and this is very powerful. So we don't identify with uh, with any other army, and not with the Waffen SS. Of course not. We are not. No, no, and, no, uh, no. And one more thing, I, I just came come to my memory because before we we talked about French colonies, you know, and the French for Legion, but uh, meantime, you know. Uh, the, the time has chance, changed and the French for Legion overall right now, today, is uh, uh, an army, a tool of Europe, you know, and we are making more and more uh, human, humanitarian uh, missions, operations. It goes uh, pair with intervention and uh, humanitarian mission. So it's always a little bit the same. So when the French for Legion, the, the Legion after the second rep made their big deal in uh, Sair, Operation Bonnet, it was to jump with 700 men over Colvesi and freeing millions and millions of people who have been in the hand of 4,000 Katanga soldiers. You know, mm. in Brazzaville has been the same. We have freed hostages, you know, held hostage by Cobra milis and, 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 you know, So the French for Legion is not there to go to a place to fight for only for French uh, colonies and for the French purposes. The, fr the French for Legion is a tool in hands of the European people. You know, this is yeah. very important. a very important message. Uh, and the French for Legion can fight. This is the main, the, the main, our main reason to exist. But the French for Legion can also build. They can build bridges. They can build. Uh, They can uh, do everything, help people everywhere in the world, you know, to clear clear means, IEDs, to go to Haiti after the earthquake, after the tsunami in India and Sri, in Sri Lanka. And this is also French for religion. We say fighter and batisseur, you know. Yes. Did you we, have the, we have the weapon in one hand, but the shuffle in the other hand. Yeah? Yes. Yes, und understood. Did you parachute, Thomas? Yeah, I've been 15 years in the second rep, and the second rep is the only parachute uh, regiment uh, in the French Foreign Legion, yes. Mm. Yes, I bet, you, I bet you've done a lot of, um, a lot of jumps. Oh, well, maybe, yes. Uh, I've done about 320 uh, automatic jumps, static line jumps, mm. and about, uh, I, was, I, I was not a free faller, you know, but, but I did about uh, 25 uh, jumps in free fall, you know, but... Uh, Yeah, it was good. In the first year when I've been in the regiment, I've done 50 uh, static line jump, which is very, very good. But in Germany, I was paratrooper also, because before joining the Legion, I've been in the Fallschirmjäger unit in, in, in Germany. I did uh, six jumps a year. And in the Legion, second rep, I did 50 a year. So it was great, you know. Wow, incredible. Yep. yep. So, Thomas, I'm going to wish you all the best. I'm, I'm going to say a big thank you to you because you are the first legionnaire I've been able to get on my show. Mm -hmm. I, I've asked three, uh, two or three, and um, two said no, they don't, they don't want to talk. One, like I said, we, we're still trying to get him on the show. But so thank you so much for being the, uh, the first. 
I think my audience will be fascinated and I think they will have lots of questions. So friends at home, if you have a lot of questions for Thomas, put them below the video and then I'm sure Thomas will come back on the show at some point. Or maybe we do a live show together, Thomas, if that's OK with you and uh, we can answer the, uh, the young people's questions. Why not, Chris? And I have been happy to be here with you today. It was a good experience also for me. And uh, every time again, if you wish to, no problem. And uh, yes, maybe you can mention The Legionnaire, my YouTube ch uh, channel in English yeah. language. I need more subscribers to tell all the people out there what's going on in the French for Legion, how has been my time. And I have also a lot of questions. What can I do to join the French for Legion? And I'm here to ask or to give an answer to your questions, guys. Yes. Keep it up. I will put a link for your channel underneath the, the video. Thank you. Chris. Thanks. Um, and yes, friends at home, you, you heard it from Thomas. Go and go and check out his channel. And uh, Thomas, just stay on the line so I can uh, hit the record button off. And then I can thank you more <laughs> um, <laughs> to our friends at home. Big love to you all. Look after yourselves. I hope you find this fascinating. If you did, could you please click like on the video and make sure you're subscribed because YouTube has been unsubscribing lots of people from the channel. We don't know why, they just do. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.